right, it is six o'clock. I will call the December 27th, 2022 meeting of the Wythe County Board of Supervisors to order. We do have a forum with Ms. Lawson and Mr. Smith um, unable to attend. We do have a request from Mr. Cook to participate remotely because he is currently out of state. Per our rules of procedure, unless I hear an objection, he will be allowed to do so. Mr. Cook, can you hear us? Yep. All right. Tonight we have Pastor John Langham from the Whitfield Presbyterian Church to provide the invocation. If you would please stand and remain standing for the pledge. May we pray. Gracious God, we gather uh, here tonight and we look uh, look back at this past year and there there's some good things uh, happened, uh, some things not so good. And, uh, so we put this year behind us, but we look uh, look forward to the new year and the things that are coming up. And we look forward and uh, give thanks for the work of this um, committee and this council. And um, we just pray, oh God, that as we move forward and all that is done, uh, your, um, your will and your desire would be sought um, and that you would um, be present in the minds and be present in the... Uh, the decisions that would be made for this community in this county. Uh, give you thanks and ask for your presence here tonight. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Right, first item on the agenda, citizens time. As always, I'll call you up, you have three minutes. The first person I have on the list is Mr. Jerry Blevins. Mr. Blevins. In lieu of my normal DTR today, I'm going to speak on what my mortal friend is doing to help solve my problems. February 16, 2022, on my first full day in jail, God relocated Lonnie R. Hudson to the spirit world. Lonnie did die test state, leaving a will to be probated. This will left a buck of his state located at 424 Bishop Road, Avenue, Virginia, to his two sons, Ronnie Lee Hudson and Rodney Wayne Hudson, to share equally. By going back through all land records located in Wythe County Circuit Court's Office, I discovered all land records that showed tax tickets for years preceding. Ronnie's building a new home at 424 Bishop Road, went to 3014 West Cott Street in Falls Church, Virginia. Yeah, that the Wythe County Commission Revenue Office was also able to verify some of the records joining tickets going to 3014 West Cott Street, Falls Church, Virginia. Next, I went to our school to see if I could get a picture of the house at 3014 West Cott Falls Church, Virginia. <clears throat> I was able to do just that. Upon looking at the picture, I discovered two dish type antennas mounted on the roof, almost exact configuration as the two dish antennas on the roof of the house at 424 Bishop Road. I don't know. Still, I needed to place at least one of the other buttons at the 3014 Westcott Street Falls Church location. For that, I went to a real estate website in Falls Church, Virginia called Neighborhood. And on the website at the 3014 Westcott location, they provided Rodney Hudson as the possible owner or resident. I also contacted a private investigator in North Carolina, and he too was able to connect Rodney Wayne Hudson to both addresses located at Falls Church and Ivanhoe. Finally, I needed someone who knew the Hudson family locally and could tell me that Rodney Hudson was at the 3014 Westcott Street, Falls Church, Virginia address for Secret Service Intelligence Training, which I was successful at doing. The above does explain a lot, it's just why did my neighbors complain about all the gunfire? <coughs> The fear on attorney's faces as I would try to speak to them. Probably damage done to my property from someone who lived close by with a lot of knowledge and access to a large computer. No fish would not my location on Cripple Creek since my lease from jail. My Pauline Horton of DSS said she didn't call the police. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Blevins. All right, the next person I have signed up is Mr. Mike Ford, Mr. Ford.
Good evening. Uh, I have a comment and then a question. Uh, the comment is I want to thank the board for the rebate that you passed recently for the personal property tax. Uh, that was a bold move on your part, first time I believe it's ever been done here, and I think the citizens will appreciate that. The second thing is a question uh, concerning the Apex Center. Uh, congratulations on finding a leaser uh, for the building, uh, but I understand that the county is going to spend uh, the uh, taxpayers' money between two and a half and three million dollars on renovations to the building for the lease. Uh, that's a lot of money to put in. That's roughly a fourth of, uh, almost a fourth of what's already been put into the building. And wanted to know if the details of the lease are in the financial agreements is available to the public, uh, since it is a county-owned building, and if there's going to be a return on investment with the additional up to $3 million, and that's just an estimate, maybe more, maybe less, of taxpayer money that's going to be in there. Uh, if that, if the financials and the lease agreement's available to the public, I'd like to be able to get a copy of that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Forrest. Um, that's all we need to sign up for citizens' time, so I'll close citizens' time. Uh, Mr. Mayor, to answer Mr. Fuller's question, I assume that's public document. Yes, I'll provide method. an email and a copy of that document. No problem. All right. Next item on our agenda is payment of invoices. <clears throat> Each board member uh, received a hard copy of the invoices um, prior to the meeting. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, if you would, you, there was a, the regular invoices are in there. The prepaid invoice packet that was in the board packet was 12-2, not 12-20. Uh, transposing of the numbers in the file, so the 12-20 prepaid are in there. So I would request you all approve the uh, uh, invoices, including the uh, handout that's there of the um, prepaid invoice. All right, with that being said, I'll entertain a motion to approve the invoices. So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Terry. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second <laughs> by Mr. Horry. Is there any invoice any board member wants to pull out and discuss? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Cook, I'll start with you. Aye. 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 So approved. Next item on our agenda is our minutes from our previous meeting from December the 13th, 2022. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make that motion. Have a motion by Mr. Burnett. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Terry. Is there any questions, discussions on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Moving on to old business, we have a asset forfeiture report. Mr. Barry, I believe you sent out an email earlier. Yes, uh, I, I sent an email out uh, to all of the board members with uh, with the process procedures, uh, my conversation information from my conversation with ECJS and others. Um, what what our goal is, is is the new line codes under the Commissioner of Revenue's office and the the two for asset state and public or federal asset forfeitures under the federal under the sheriff's budget that we just budget those items in there that is the biggest issue with it is it's, it's a process what we've got to go through the usually the commissioner sends a letter up saying i'm moving money from here to there or, or the sheriff will come with attorney sends up requesting to move money from asset forfeiture over then we're having to uh, track it within the expenditures. This gives us the ability to budget the funds that they want to spend in the line item asset forfeiture. And then all they've got to do is just put in a requisition um, and get the requisition approved, issue the purchase order, and spend the funds. It gives them one line item to track it off of. It gives the, uh, the uh, finance department one line item to track it off of. 
There's no reason for them to, to send the reports anymore to transfer the funds. They can do the transfers directly off the month and year to date reports. And it should make the process a whole lot easier. Because the biggest thing I think is having to do the letter and if money's not already budgeted. What I'd recommend is that the budget committee at our next meeting, meeting next week, that we go ahead and I'll get in touch with the commission, with the Commonwealth Attorney and the Sheriff and determine how much of those funds they would like to put into the budget for the remainder of this year, if any. And then next year, as we're doing the budget, we'll do the same thing there with putting in the funds. And then that way, it's all budgeted. It, they don't have to come back and ask for an allocation. So for the sheriff's office, he's got $100,000 in the federal asset. Probably not going to use it, but if we go ahead and budget it in the federal asset, if he comes up with something he needs to spend that for, that he goes ahead and puts in his purchase order and spends that money, and it doesn't have to go through any tracking. It helps out them. It helps out our finance department because they're not having to do the transaction, you know, the, the letters, getting the letters, transferring the funds, all of that. So, so it just simplifies the process. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't hear that. Is that the correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I assume we don't need to, I mean, it's not an action. I no, no action that you all need to take other than at the next meeting we'll definitely we'll need to appropriate whatever we need to for this year in the budget. We'll get that from the budget committee next year. Give it a try for six months or a year and we'll see if it's working better. If not, we'll try again. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Barry on that? All right, we'll move on to our draft 2023 rules of procedures and meeting calendar. That's, we've had that on there for a couple months. Um, do you have any suggestions or problems with the meeting dates? We'll just send that, to, send that out. Um, we'll be adopting that uh, at our next meeting. We have anything else under old business? I was trying to drag that out. So. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to new business. We have our consent calendar. Everybody's received that new board package. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Terry. Second by Mr. Morty. Is there any questions or discussion on that? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry? Aye. 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 Mr. Cook? Aye. Thank Aye. You. Thank you, sir. So approved. Next, we have our fiscal year 23 expenditure budget, um, third quarter appropriation. You've all received that in your board package. I'll entertain a motion to appropriate for the third quarter. So I move. have a motion by Mr. Horney. Do I have a second? Second. have a second by Mr. Burnett. Is there any questions or discussion on that item? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Cook? Aye. 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 So approved. Move on to staff reports. Have uh, Mr. Hankins. Or I'm sorry. I skipped her treasure report. Well, yeah, that was good. She said she was going to be late for the stuff she's working on. So if you want to do the rest of them and come back to that, that would be fine. I thought you were just ahead of the curve, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> I skipped the whole paragraph. That was... <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Hank. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, got one action item for you. Um, we've talked about codification, which is organizing our code of ordinances into something that's more user friendly. Um, we've gone out for pricing on that. We, we received two proposals back and we recommended that you accept one from uh, Municode, which is used by most of the counties that surround us and most in Southwest Virginia. Um, Scott is familiar with them and uh, we've, we've had a conversation about his preference. Um, we do have pricing attached. Um, the only thing that, that uh, has come up since we put out that RFP is that uh, uh, at least you, Mr. Chairman, have, uh, have indicated you might be interested in some of the other services that we went out for uh, that they provide. Uh, if there's any wish that we try to negotiate any additional services, 
uh, such as uh, website design. Uh, but there's a, a few others that I have in my report there that uh, we, you may be interested in. Uh, we, we can certainly pursue those now, or we can uh, pursue them later after we see what they do on the codification side and see how, how happy we are with their project. Is there, a, I guess, a, a cost benefit if we negotiate with like website design? There is. They're offering a 20% discount off of uh, this service and additional services if we negotiate for more than one at the same time. Um, meeting agenda software is, is one of those that they, they offer. I know we've had some conversation about you know, organizing more like the school board does with, with board docs. Uh, we did not specifically go out for that service, but we included um, the opportunity for them to include additional services in their RFP response. Chairman, I, you know, I think you can negotiate it and get a price and then come back, right, um, mm -hmm. and then say, here's what each piece costs, and then we look at that RFP. If it includes other services and that's part of the bid, I think it may be okay on that um, as far as the RFP goes. You know, as far as the codification, I've, I've looked at other counties and I like the product that, that they produce. It's a good product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's um, it, it is definitely needed. Um, you know, the website design, I'm not familiar with any of their work. Um, I think they definitely need a better website. We do. Um, it's better than it was. My first opinion is still up. And, and our IT staff is still in the it, it needs to be third party. Mm -hmm. I, 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 my recommendation would be definitely authorize the proceeding with them for codification and then let staff negotiate prices with them and bring that back to the next meeting. This county attorney to review that as yeah. well and see yeah. what we do. But definitely codification. At least the web service or the, the, the board docs, uh, whatever it is. All right, I'll entertain a motion to authorize the staff to enter into the contract for the codification services and negotiate other services to be brought back before the board. So I have a motion by Mr. Terry. I have a second. <coughs> Second. Have a second by Mr. Morey. Is there any more questions or discussion on that item? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry? Aye. 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 Mr. Cook? Aye. Thank you, sir. All right. Anything else, Mr. Hankins? The, the rest of my report is informational. One thing I would point out is on the uh, rural retreat lake pool. Um, we, we put out the request for proposals uh, to uh, do those uh, updates and repairs. We got one back, and in the time it took us to bring that to you and approve it, the calendar filled up for the spring for those repairs to be done. Um, and we were trying to get it done for next swim season, so it looks like we, we won't be able to do it for next swim season. It would be for 2024. We're trying to negotiate some um, price reductions uh, for having to wait uh, the extra length of time or at least see if there are things that can be done in the interim to improve our uh, existing pool's performance until we can uh, do the, the total repairs. So I uh, just wanted you to be aware of that. Didn't want to get lost in the shuffle. Um, we, we'll bring you an update on, on where we are with that. But uh, Kevin's been working with the, uh, the, the contract provider to uh, try to get us to where we can, can make some improvements this year uh, with the expectation that most of them won't be done until the 2024 swing season. Is, is it going to cost us more money down the road because thanks to, well, we got the contract signed. I'll just say it 
thanks to the Department of Game and Animal Fisheries not giving us leads for years, we're, we're past due to have a resurface. Is that going to be detrimental maybe another year? I mean, is that going to, or once we lock in the contract is? Our expectation is once the contract is signed that it's, it's locked in. Um, so um, we, we want to see if there's anything that we can negotiate out, though, for having to, to wait longer. Um, you know, I think part of the expectation when we put out the bid was it was going to be a fairly rushed process anyway. So, um, you know, if they don't have to rush, if they can do a little more to plan or work here and there as they're able to, then hopefully we can, you know, figure out a little bit lower pricing than we got. There will be some maintenance costs for us, some things that we, we will have to take care of. You know, there's some cracked areas and some things that we'll have to do from a maintenance standpoint, but we've been doing those anyway. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, anything else, Mr. Hankins? Unless any board member has questions for me. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Hankins? All right, move on to County Administrator, Mr. Baird. Most all of mine is informational. The first item is the appointment list, uh, and I would ask that you all reappoint uh, the members that are on there, uh, the five members. There has been a, uh, an appeal filed with the building code official. Um, the terms are supposed to be staggered terms. Uh, Ms. Collins did a uh, official drawing of the hat to apply the uh, staggered terms that are here and uh, we request that you all appoint those five members. They have been contacted and all are interested in some of them. I am trying to find this. Page 197. We need to do those individual You can meetings. do them at the end of All right, I'll entertain a motion to <coughs> appoint the uh, building code, or reappoint the building code to build for you. So move. Have a motion by Mr. Horney. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Burnett. Is there any questions or discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign. They are so reappointed. And am I looking at this right? One gentleman has been on since 1984 and one since 1987. I believe that is correct. And I don't think we've had but two appeals in a couple, maybe two or three appeals in a couple decades that I've been That's what I've been on. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't hold me to it, but other than the um, bag, the stock uh, the stock market thing out there, that was the biggest one that I know. And I think there's one or two small other ones that's been here. Other than that, Mr. Chairman, all of mine is just informational. Uh, I didn't highlight that Mr. Kenser's report in the, the county is. Engineers report has a whole lot of information about all the projects that are ongoing, uh, but I just I just did a brief summary of some of the loose part information. But glad to answer any questions that, that you all have. Other than that, short report. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Baird? All right. Here now we'll move on to County Attorney Mr. Farley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't have anything to report. I'm just working on different projects and assignments from the county staff uh, and helping them out. Uh, when requested. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Forty? Hearing them, we'll back up and Miss Bonk, do you have anything? Um, no, I do not have anything unless anybody has any questions they want to ask me. I guess the question, the burning question for everybody is when's the real estate taxes going out? Um, well, there's a Another small hurdle. Um, the code says that uh, the tax tickets have to go out with the January 1 owner's name on it, but be mailed to the current owner. Um, that's not happening. So until they get that fixed, I don't, I don't guess they'll be going out. 
Um, it's been suggested to me that we go ahead and mail them out the way they are. I'm totally against that, and one reason I'm totally against it is because last year's tax book, the tax levy was calculated wrong. Um, I started complaining about that in November. I've sent several emails. This year's tax book, the preliminary tax book, the tax, le tax levy is calculated wrong again. Um, so if we let this ride, we're going to be in the same place this year, next year that we are now. There's been how many patches done to get this book where it is? Um, you're going into the month of January. August is eight months. Um, I just feel like we're going to be in the same position next year that we are now with all these little patches. We need to get it done. It needs to be done right before we go any further. No more patches. It needs to be fixed. Mr. Barry, I think it's about time to invite a company representative to our meeting. Uh, we we can do so, and, and, and I think Ms. Vault would, would agree with me. The, the steps have moved way ahead. Right now, the, the, the bridge is transferring all the things over. The difference in the dollar figure between the vision system and the other system is like a hundred and some dollars difference in it. it that's, yeah, yeah, but it's uh, but, been I mean, a long way getting there. But though. yeah, all that is, has come, I mean, all that has been done. And it's basically, you know, you, you, the, they've gotten to this point. Everything is basically was on the treasurer side, right about. They've been working on the escrow side, which has been a problem for a couple of years. Uh, it's my understanding that the escrow issue may be addressed. That may be what Ms. Quinn is, is still working on down there. Uh, and then this problem came up. It, it's showing the owner, but it's showing the new owner's name. Um, and as she it's, brought up, it's, yeah. it's the, the ones that have sold. Um, so they, if they went out as they were, it would, would go out to the new owner like they do. But she's brought up that her interpretation of the code is that it has to have the previous owner's name on it because that was the owner of record as of January. And so that has just been discovered as of Well, no, I've so. been asking about that since July. Every time we've ever had a meeting with those people that were doing the code, I'm like, what about the January 1 owner? And it's been swept under the rug for the past six months. But we were working on the Camel Bridge at that point. In time. We were Camel working Bridge on it in late. July when the meeting started. So and they've known about this, and I've been ask I've been asking about it, and asking about it, and asking about it. Um, let's don't worry about that now. Let's get this done. The same way they do everything. It's very frustrating. And hopefully, Miss. Gwen will get up here before the meeting's over. We can also talk to her on where the status is on her side of it as well as the escrow and all of those accounts. Um, where it is, but we can uh, certainly talk with our representative and tell them that we'd like to have them come and make an explanation of, of what is here. Well, I mean, we, we need a V-Day. We need you know, a list of our ways. And, and understood. understood. And the, the next software that we buy whatever department for whatever purpose we need to put some very strong language in the contract with the party uh, you know this is the date we expect it is not for you know yeah. because they, they see these products and uh, you know it's all it's all rainbows and smiles when they're giving you sales pitch right. but you know now you're stuck. What do you, I mean, what do you do? Well, and the thing that bothers me about it is there's other co there's other counties in Virginia that that have this product. They act like they've never heard of any of this stuff before. I I, I just don't get it. And then I mean, you know, they on the due diligence phase, you know, they had good references. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and I understand that they're importing information from a very old system that was made in house, but you know they knew that up front. Yeah, they did, and that was created by one person, and it did everything that we needed it to do. It's amazing to me that this company can't can't do that. <laughs> we, I think we really got a 
the value of that person for the years that he worked here. I think now that he's gone, I know, mean, it's so. All right. Well, thank you, Miss Ball. All right. All right, we'll move on to board reports. We'll come back to Miss Gwen if she shows up. We got the Buildings and Grounds Committee, and I'm not sure who wants to. I got it. Thank you, sir. The Buildings and Grounds Committee met on December 20, 2022, and made the following recommendations. Number one, purchasing three with county residents only signs for the three trash and recycling centers on the eastern end of the county. All right. Coming from a committee, it doesn't need a second. Is there any questions or discussion on that one? Ms. Watson, do we know what the cost is, Mr. Chairman? It's, uh, we've got enough money in the budget to do it. I think they were 50 to 60 dollars. 50 a piece. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sir. All right. Are we only going to do the one seven of the eastern? Just the three on the eastern end of the county is what's proposed right now, and see how that does. <clears throat> Does anybody else have any more questions? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry? Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, uh. Mr. Uh, Cook, thank you, sir. So approved. <coughs> the second item was amending and appropriating 60000 to 9000 to purchase the Apex John Deere tractor and loader. All right, come to the committee, it doesn't need a second. Is there any questions or discussion on that one? Yeah, I didn't understand what he said. What are we voting on? The John Deere tractor. Okay, I got you. Is there any more questions or discussion? And I just want to clarify, we're not purchasing the tractor for the Apex Center. We're purchasing the tractor that was used at the Apex Center. That's correct. All right, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Cook? Aye. 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 So approved. The third item is approving the stormwater management facility maintenance and agreement for the Apex property. Again, come the committee does it need a second. Do you want to explain that one, Mr. Baird? Yeah, Mr. Kenser has been working with uh, DEQ, and we have to have this long-term maintenance agreement in place uh, and Mr. Kenser is, is basically trying to get everything in line where we can uh, get out of the uh, the oversight from them in the process and just being the ongoing management of the property. All right. Does anybody have any questions or discussion for that item? Terry Mill will do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry? Aye. 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 So approved. Fourth item is amending and appropriating $1,200 to 21021-470015 to assist with purchasing shelving units for juvenile and domestic relations court. All right. <laughs> is there any questions or discussion on that? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Cook? Aye. 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 So approved. And the final item is proceeding with ZMM architects and engineers for the design of the courthouse modification for inmate conveyance. All right, is there any questions or discussion on that item? And that will do roll call vote, Mr. Terry. Aye. 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 So approved. And that's all from the building and grants. Yeah. Yes, sir. Move on to the Water Committee. All right. Uh, the Water Committee met on December the 20th, 2022, and makes the following recommendations. <clears throat> Approving feeding board, or authorizing feeding boards to update the preliminary engineering report and environmental review for the Olive Branch project. All right. Coming from the committee, it doesn't need a second. Is there any questions or discussion on that one? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry. Uh, 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 so approved. The second one is transferring one million dollars from the general fund to the water fund to and to amend and appropriate the same to 
9050-470-440 to be used for replacement of the old line on Route 94. Current funds available, only fund replacing part of the old line. Right. Is there any question or discussion on that recommendation? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote with Mr. Cook. Aye. 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 So approved. And the last is transferring $20,000 from the Piney Pump Station Project to Asylum Project to address <coughs> pressure issues in Shadow Lane area. Is there any questions or discussion on that? All right, we'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Terry. Aye. 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 So approved. Anything else from the water committee? I believe that was it. Right, thank you, sir. Board of Supervisors time. Mr. Cook, I'll start with you, sir. I have nothing at this time, sir. All right, thank you. Mr. Burnett. All I have is wish y'all a happy year. Thank you, sir. Mr. Horney. I don't believe I have anything at this time. Mr. Terry. Just a happy, safe, blessed new year to everyone, sir. Everybody must have had a good cruise. <laughs> Everybody's uh, still frozen. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll go, you know, it's supposed to be 58 Saturday. I'll go ask if we can go to the pool to retreat. I just want to echo what y'all, you know, what you said about have a good new year. Uh, this is our last meeting of 2022. Um, 2022 has been an interesting year. I just want to say, I appreciate to all the board members and, and the work we've done, um, especially on the, the taxes. Um, it's been an interesting year with real estate and, and vehicle taxes. I'll echo um, what Mr. Forrest said earlier. Um, I'm awful proud that we, we could come together and do a refund. Um, million dollars going back to the citizens never been done before in Wick County. Um, hopefully that'll help them out, especially when they get their AEP bill this month. Um, uh, looking forward to 2023, um, but I appreciate uh, Mr. Barry, Mr. Hankins, Mr. Farley, and Ms. Collins. Uh, people don't realize what a small staff we have for County that's growing. And with that being said, I hope everybody has a good New Year. When you are finished, Mr. Chairman, I would request one additional item from you on the order. And we need to talk on <laughs> <laughs> I've already sent the email. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. I'm good. Um, I, I failed to bring this up in my report, and when you just now mentioned um, uh, the AEP bill, this past weekend, as everyone is aware, we had extremely cold temperatures. Um, and because of that, we end up with a tremendous amount of water meters and everything freezing in the process. Um, just wanted to, to give you all some information about this weekend. Uh, Josh Heldress was on call this holiday weekend and answered many of the calls from concerning outages. And uh, Josh repaired 10 meters that were frozen at first in difficult circumstances. He ended up having over 18 hours of uh, call-in time this weekend answering the calls, and that was Christmas Eve and Christmas Day in zero degree weather in the process. Uh, Kelly Kenser came out on Christmas Day, worked on meter repairs, and over the holiday he ended up having six hours over the weekend. Um, from the wastewater side, Thomas Roach ended up working uh, over uh, over calls for the hours. Working some on Friday, he answered early AM calls due to the power outages on Saturday at the, the plants and 13 lift stations. He checked on all them individually. Uh, Zach Jones had to go out on some of the frozen equipment all the plants. Everything had been checked. Everything was there. It was just the freezing temperature settled in and, and hit a few things in the process. Um, and then Patrick Nicola completed plant and lift station operations to clean out the frozen equipment. So those water and wastewater guys were out this weekend and spent some additional time, um, just like we have done with the um, building and ground crew. Last week, we've, we've had them call out the snow. We've had them at, at pay and a half time. These guys are at pay and a half time, but 
sensitive holiday weekend, I would request that you all be the opposition to go ahead and doing that at double time instead of just time and a half for their overtime on the additional hours of work this week. As far as I'm concerned, my holiday, take Christmas out of it, which, I mean, I know it's rough, but anybody that's out working this weekend, and I'm sure uh, our resident farmer over here would agree, <laughs> they deserve every penny of it. I can vouch that Josh was gone. Yeah. Uh, it, it was like it was like you'd see the truck come in, and then you look and you'd see the truck leave. <laughs> uh, I actually passed him one time this weekend, and I was like, "That's not good." <laughs> um, so, do we need to take action? I, 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 if you would, Mr. Chairman, I would request you all take action, just recognizing those individuals for their work this weekend, and authorize uh, payment of double time. I'll make that motion. I have a motion by Mr. Horner. Do I have a second? Second. second. Have a second by Mr. Burnett. <laughs> Is there any questions or discussion on that? Here now we'll do a roll call vote with Mr. Cook. Aye. 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 So approved and pass on our appreciation and also um, the, the fire and, and rescue and I guess all first responders that, that work through this. I don't know how many calls they had but it was a lot um, so certainly appreciative of them and makes me glad I'm not on the fire department does anybody else have anything come before the board Mr. Collins alright y'all have a good new year we'll be adjourned